now that we have our data all set up for our vertices, it's time to go to shaders. Basically what shaders are is what are we going to be doing with our vertex data GPU side? And essentially this is how we're going to be rendering things to our screen. So I'm using FX Composer made by NVIDIA version 2.5. And I got this from their website. Um, you just do need to sign up for it. And it is plenty free. However, if you're going to be using it for commercially, you're going to need to, you know, research all that. So what I did is go to new, or file, new project, and I don't want it. Okay, project six, hit okay. And now nothing shows up. What, what happened? Looks like nothing really happened. Really something did. If you go over here to materials, you go to show effects, you right click in this box, you go to add effect, and then oh, what do we want to make? We're going to be making an HLSL FX and hit next. And this is all a bunch of stuff that they made for you. Make some gooch, but we're not going to do that. We're actually going to just do an empty.fx. We're going to call it, uh, let's just call it color shader and hit next. And we don't want to create a material for this or really, it really doesn't matter if you do. And then just hit finish. And it, you know, it makes all this stuff for you. Personally, I think it looks ugly. I don't like the way it looks. So I'm just going to fix up some of the stuff. It does do, uh, what is it, like one true race or something like that. I don't know. I don't program like that. And also, I did get rid of this, uh, that colon position because it just causes a bunch of problems for me in some instances when I was programming the shaders. So I just take that out completely. So, with all this being said and done, I just deleted all those comments up there, and now we have all of this cool stuff. Um, essentially, what this is going to do is, this is what it'll do. I've created a plane down here by clicking this plane, and I now have my cool color shader, and we're just going to click on it and drag it over here, and this is all our shader's doing. If we were to render something right now, our triangle, this is what it would look like. Assuming, of course, we're passing in the necessary data. However, we're not. So <laughs> what we're going to be doing is this is just something that going under the assumption that we're passing in our float three, the position of our vertices. But what we're going to do is we're going to actually create two structures. One structure is going to be what data is going to be passed into our vertex shader. And basically here's what we have. All right, vertex shaders. All right, so we have our, we have two different parts of our shader. We have the vertex shader and the pixel shader. What our vertex shader is is it's basically how are we going to be setting up our vertices this is when it's going through each individual vertex so if we're looking at this and let's just pretend that this is actually cut in half so if we're working with two triangles but we're only working with these vertices it's going to go it's going to call our vertex shader for as many vertices as we have so if we have a vertex here it's and then we get to this vertex it's going to be doing that right here and then that vertex that vertex and that vertex, and so on. So essentially, if they have four vertices, for this is going to call the vertex shader four times. What our goal for this is is we want to essentially output our ver uh, structure that we're going to be making in here, and which will then go to our pixel shader. And our pixel shader will go for however many pixels our object is taking up. So, whew, that's a mouthful. Okay, so we're going to be creating a structure. All right, and we're just going to call this structure uh, VS input for vertex shader input. All right, and inside it, it's going to be the same as the structure that we had actually created inside our app.h. If you see right here, we have the D3D, D3DX vector three and a D3D color. Like I said, a D3D color is the same as a vector four. So moving back over to here, we're going to do a float three we're just going to call this position. It can be named whatever you want. It doesn't have to be the same, but I'm just for simplicity's sake, we're going to just call it the same as we did in our struct CPU side. And we're going to call this or we're going to do colon and we need to basically like classify it as, you know, what is this? So it is a position 0. Position 0. All right. So next what we're going to do is we're going to do flip 4. And we're going to call this color, and it is a color zero. Perfect. So now we have our structure that we're going to be sending to our vertex shader, which is basically, hey, what are we sending in? Uh, remember we filled out our declaration? 
that's basically what VS input is. Remember when we filled out our data? That's basically what this is. So next, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a struct for the v, the vertex structure output. And after all this stuff this is all said and done, this output is going to be sent over to the pixel shader. Seems simple enough, right? So basically, what this is going to be is we're it's going to be a float four because what this is going to do is we're going to need our position um, in rel relative to the X, Y, Z, W. Um, this will be explained in a later video uh, when I go more in depth on what you know we're actually doing here. But we're going to do a new position. I'm going to classify it as a position zero, and then flip four, and it's going to be an interpolated color because when we actually set up our color in our vertex shader, it's going to be an interpolated color. Just, just so you know. So now we have that. So next what we're going to do is, this works essentially just like a function would. How we have, you know, it's going to be returning a float four and it's going to be taking in a float three. We actually are going to change that. All right, so we're just going to call this VS in, right that. But we don't want to pass in a float four, we want to pass in, you know, all this cool stuff. So we're going to be using our VS input structure. And that's that. So from there, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to transfer our vertices into world space. And to do this, or to, that, to do this, what we're going to be doing is, uh, it might not be world space. I might be wrong with that. Um, I'll be putting an annotation in uh, saying exactly what it is. Um, once again, I'll just be explaining that stuff more in depth later on. But we're going to be transferring it over regardless. So we're going to create a vertex output because what we're going to be doing is instead of returning a float four, we're going to be returning a vertex output. So we're going to call it VS out. And we're going to just leave it. All right, from there, we need to fill out two things, our new position and our interpolated color. So we're going to do VS out dot new position equals. Now, in order to get our vertex into the position that we want it to be or into the space that we want it to be, we need to multiply, which is MUL. This is different from actually the multiplication operator, but we're gonna want to multiply uh, float four. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually typecast a float four, or actually that's an overloaded operator. But yeah, float four, VSN dot position, and what the next one is going to be is 1.0 f. And the reasoning behind this is whenever we're going to be doing stuff like uh, transferring vertices over, it's always going to want to be 1.0. However, if you are transferring over normals, you want that number to be 0, 0.0 f. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to uh, multiply it with our worldview projection matrix, which is going to be covered on how to, what what that x actually is in the next video. However, this is going to be up here. It's a float 4x4, which is a matrix. So we're going to copy that and paste it there. And there we go. And what this is doing is it's multiplying a float 4 by a 4x4 four four matrix. And it's going to give us our float 4 new position. Next, what we're going to be doing is we need to get the interpolated color, which is actually really easy, VS out dot interpolated color equals vs in dot color and that's that and you're good lastly what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to return this and there's your pixel shader or sorry vertex shader and that's about it so i'm going to hit f6 oh it's actually new position Sorry, I spelled new position wrong. All right, so essentially this is still working the same way, just as last time. Look at that, it's perfect. All right, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our pixel shader. And this returns a float four, that is correct. However, we actually need to take in some data. So what we're gonna be taking in is what our, our vertex shader is gonna be returning, which is a vertex output. 
and we're going to call it PS in for pixel shader in. Next, this is magic. Are you ready? You know how we sent in our colors up here to each vertex? So let's say that we were, let's pretend that there's just a triangle here. And we were saying, oh, this corner is red. Well, when you go and you work with this vertex, what it's going to be doing is VS in is that color for that vertex. So check this out. If we do PS in dot color, or sorry, interpolated color, because that's a float four and we're returning a float four, which is essentially our ARGB color. So with that being said, it's not gonna turn out black because we actually can't fill in the data that we're passing in per vertex as far as HLSL go, or NVIDIA FX Composer goes. However, hit F6, and that actually does compile it. And you see that there's no errors down here. You just ignore these two right here. And now our, our, uh, our shader is done. Our, uh, this is how you make a, the most basic of a color shader. So next what we're going to wanna do is we're going to wanna go over into where we uh, created this. And I think I might be able to actually open this. sec. I'm not actually sure how we, where are we saved it to? All right, so we're going to actually go over here, projects, and boom, 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 and it was in project six, and now we have a color shader dot fx, which is our shader. And now keep in mind, if you have something like Notepad++ or just Notepad or something, you can easily open these up and you can make it like this. Although you won't have the, um, well, what I would call IntelliSense telling you, oh, there's, you know, there's an error here. There's something wrong. Um, there wouldn't be anything there telling you. Yeah, so now we do have our shader all filled out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to control C it from here. And we're going to need to actually um, bring up our project. So what we're going to do is we're going to be going into our project, which I don't know wherever you have your project set up at. Um, this would be under, I think, copy. I think that's what we're working under. I hope. Yeah, so what we're going to be doing is um, we have our main project right here. We're just going to copy and paste it into here, color shader dot effects. So now we have that all set up as far as making the shader goes, but now it is time to actually import it. So next, what we're going to need to do is we're going to go back over to visual studio or whatever it is that you're going to be using. And we're going to create our shader variable. Well, there's not really, it's just more of shader variable. All right, and what we're gonna be creating is an I D 3 D X effect. And we're gonna call this once again, all right, it's a pointer by the way, M underscore P shader. And by the way, I kind of forgot to explain this in the last video, but make sure you're initializing these guys to zero. The, uh, the vertex buffer, the index buffer, and the vertex declaration as well as this effect, excuse me. What we're going to do is we're going to do all of these in one sitting. Up in here. Make sure that you're initializing these all these to null. Because like I said, you just you're gonna need to you're and eventually you're going to eventually need to clean these guys up. And you're gonna need to make sure that they're all initialized and nothing went wrong. Okay, so now that we have that done, going back down into our code, what we're going to now be doing is we're going to be creating our, we're gonna be loading in our effect. To do this, it's one simple call. D3DX, well actually, one sec. <laughs> I know, it's suspense, it's build up. Create our shader. D3DX, oh jeez. Create, effect, from file and also throw an A at the end of it if you want to be just doing normal strings or num normal chars, not uh, wide chars. So what it wants is it wants a pointer to our device. So, oh, sorry. So what we're gonna be sending in is M underscore P device because we're gonna be using the device to actually create this effect or load it in. 
it wants, oh, where is our, where is our shader file? So we just called it color shader dot FX. Next, it wants a bunch of stuff, zero, zero, zero. <laughs> I'm not gonna explain them in this tutorial. Um, however, they, there could be some uses for them, actually. I have used a couple of those before in previous programming days. However, I'm not using it for this, uh, using them for this example. Next, it wants a long pointer to our effect. So that means the address of, or pointer pointer, M underscore P shader. And then lastly, send in zero. Like I said, once again, uh, if you want to figure out what all these do, MSDN is a magical place. Cannot, just, just, I cannot tell you how amazing it is. Next, we want to do an assert, failed to create shader. And that's it. And there we go. So now we've currently loaded in our shader. Um, with all that being said, we only have a couple more things to do. Next up, we're going to be actually rendering um, all our data out and we're going to see how it works. And then we're going to be, uh, you know, seeing how everything works. And then we're going to be releasing and then we shall be done.